We have not had our last great day together. Come on, guys. We can do this. Today will not be reheated meat. Looks like the good hair crew's perfect day turns into the worst day ever. Let's break down Andy Mac Season 2, Episode 15, right here on What Happened. <laughs> What's going on, you lovely people? Lisa here, and welcome back to What Happened, my recap show. It is Monday, which means not only the Monday blues, but another new episode of Andy Mack this summer. Now, some of you asked me in my last recap how on earth I had this episode so darn early before it aired on Disney Channel Monday night. Well, all you gotta do is go check out the Disney app or watch DisneyChannel.com because the episode usually goes up really early in the day on there, and that's how I was able to watch it. I think all you need is a cable login of some kind, but that's how I got the episode early. All right, so in this episode titled Perfect Day, our A storyline follows the good hair crew as they try to make the most of Buffy's time left with the group by recreating their perfect day. Our B storyline brings back the subject of Jonah's panic attack, so let's talk about him first. We see that Jonah is having a panic attack and ends up running into the music store, and who just so happens to be sitting there? It is Bowie. Yeah, Bowie's friend owns the place and he often plays there, so it's kind of like serendipity that he happens to be there and that's the store Jonah runs into. Now Jonah is really panicking and we actually don't learn what sets off this panic attack in the episode, but I am glad that the subject of his attacks was brought back up. Bowie tries to calm Jonah down and tells him to just breathe and asks what he's doing there. Jonah doesn't feel comfortable yet opening up to Bowie about the panic attack, so he lies saying he ran to the store to buy his first guitar. Now you know this is Disney and that many of their actors sing, so it was only a matter of time before they worked Asher Angel's music into the show or his abilities. Bowie's just adorable and he starts to teach Jonah, who says that he's never played, you know, the guitar before, the three chords that his own dad taught him. D, A, and G. And I gotta say, those along with the C chord are the only four chords I ever learned when I tried to play guitar, but you know what? Those were good enough to let Taylor Swift write a ton of hit songs, so they're good enough for me. Anyway, these two continue to bond, and Bowie even compliments Jonah on how he's a natural at the guitar. Bowie then finally asks Jonah, though, what's really going on, and Jonah finally opens up about his panic attacks and how he isn't seeing a doctor for them, but it seems like playing the guitar has actually helped him calm down, especially his shaking hands. Bowie sweetly says that he'll be there for Jonah if he ever needs him, and that he would love to keep giving Jonah lessons. And Jonah just asks in return that Bowie does not tell Andy about his panic attacks. Bowie says that even though he thinks Andy would actually understand, he'll keep Jonah's wishes his secret, and Jonah says that he'll think about the guitar lessons. I have a feeling that these guitar lessons are going to continue, especially seeing how it really helped calm Jonah down. I feel like we all have that thing that, you know, helps calm us down. For me, it's kind of drawing. That's really when I need to, like, relieve stress. I can go sit and draw and I feel so much better. But hopefully we do find out what exactly triggered the panic attack because you know what? If his relationship trouble with Andy last episode did not trigger it, I am so curious what did. Now on to the good hair crew and our A storyline. Since Buffy only has around a week left before she moves, the trio want to do something different, not just sit and eat baby taters at the spoon all day, which sounds like a great thing to me. They want this epic day, and well, everyone but Andy is pretty much like, you can't recreate a perfect day, but we all know that Andy's pretty stubborn, and when she puts her mind into something, she's determined to make it happen no matter what, and no matter what Bex says also. So Andy's ready to prove Bex wrong, and they recreate their perfect day from five years ago when Andy, Cyrus, and Buffy rode their bikes and got some pumpkin donuts and rode to the Alpine Slide. Well, if it's any indicator of how the day will go, Andy sold her bike, so she has to use Bex's rusty old thing, which immediately falls apart. But thankfully, there's a bike shop nearby, and if this was me, I would have taken this as an omen and been like, nah, we're just going to get baby taters. But the kids endure and end up going to the country store with Cyrus lagging way behind. They do get their delicious cider and pumpkin donuts, and so when Bex calls to check in, it's like in your face. Unfortunately, as expected, that perfect day then becomes a victim of Murphy's Law and just comes crashing down. As they go to leave the country store, a bee starts following Cyrus, then Buffy and Cyrus' bikes have been stolen, so now they have to walk to the Alpine Slide. Along the way, what Cyrus thinks is the same bee from the store starts to nuzzle him again, and Cyrus ends up with his leg stuck in a muddy hole. Now, after being pulled out, he's now left with one shoe and everybody covered in mud. A deputy then pulls up to offer them a ride, and Cyrus and Buffy are ready to just call in a day, but Andy of course is still determined to make this perfect day work, so she asks the deputy to take them to the Alpine Slide. Now on their drive they notice two boys riding bikes and they think these are the guys that stole their own bikes. 
but the deputy cannot go after them because, well, she gets a call about a stolen car and has to drop those kids back off at the country store. The problem here, she drives off with the lone bike and Andy and Buffy's bags and phones. So, the good hair crew is left with just muddy clothes on their backs and Cyrus's phone that only has 2% battery left, aka enough battery for one phone call. So they use that phone call to call Bex and Buffy and Cyrus tell Andy to ask her to pick them up, but when Bex starts apologizing for doubting Andy, Andy lies saying that, oh, they're about to go up the chairlift and they gotta go, so the phone dies and of course the country store is now closed. Stubborn Andy says they can still recreate their best day ever and she doesn't want Buffy to leave and remember them giving up, but remember them as the kids that made it happen. Now it's kind of a good rousing speech, but it's capped off with that bee finally getting a taste of Cyrus's cheek. They go walking in order to help find, you know, help or a phone or something when a truck pulls up on the side of the road. And it's not just any truck. It's Judy's Bloom truck. Ha, get it? Judy Bloom. Shout out there to the author of the Ramona books and a bunch of other books. One of my favorites as a kid. But back to the story. Driving that truck is, of course, Bex. Something sounded off about your phone call. Also, I thought I heard Cyrus crying in the background. Cyrus saves the day. Now look at Cyrus being a hero in his own unique way. Now when Bex asks where the kids want to go now, the first guess that your mind goes to here is that Andy says Alpine Slide because she has been so damn determined to make it there and finish this perfect day. But there's actually only one way to truly cap off this day and that is back at the spoon with a beautiful tasty basket of baby taters. So that's where our good hair crew goes and they dub this not the perfect day, but the craziest day they've ever had. Honestly, they're never gonna forget this one. And then they see two boys walk in wearing Alpine slide shirts and they think that they're the kids who stole their bikes and not only stole their bikes, but stole their whole day. So they go outside to reclaim their property. Now Andy and Cyrus put on the bike helmets they took off the table and get on the bikes and get a few feet away before they all realize, dude, these aren't our bikes. And so they just start laughing and come to the realization that it doesn't matter what they do as long as they're together. And then things take an immediately like sad turn as they realize they only have Buffy for one more week. So they end up saying, see you tomorrow. There's going to be another adventure the next day. They group hug and walk their separate ways. And that's the end of the episode, but there's still got to be a way for Buffy to stay, right? I grew up with a dad in the military, so I get what she's going through. Thankfully, I only had to move in the middle of a school year once, but I didn't have that choice that she does. I think that uh, the dilemma that Buffy's going through with wanting to be with her mom, but also her friends, I get that. But I think also staying until the end of the school year for just two months is such a good solution. Like I've been that new kid in the middle of a school year and it's not always super easy. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens with Buffy. But the way that Buffy looked back over her shoulder as Cyrus and Andy were walking away was just heartbreaking. And it gave me this little hope that maybe she's reconsidering the whole thing of moving away in 10 days or in a week, whatever it is. For now, though, let's take a look at the promo for the next episode. School is canceled. What do you most regret not saying to someone? I'm not going to answer that question. We just had our first big fight as mother and daughter. We're still having our first big fight. All right, it looks like the next episode is going to be a dramatic one, but in two completely different ways. We got Buffy, Cyrus, and Jonah playing a version of a game that looks like Monopoly, and trust me, if you've ever played this game, especially with your family, you know things can get super heated with that game. And Andy and Bex having their first huge Fight. Like, oddly, I'm kind of excited to see that because it seems like Bex, ever since, you know, the beginning drama of finding out that, you know, that's her daughter and or, or Andy finding out Bex is her mom and the drama with Cece. After that, it seemed like Bex was doing kind of okay and hasn't really done that many hiccups. So I'm excited to see how this fight happens. And you know what? It seems like it could be over the drama of like maybe Bex or Bowie, whatever Bex doesn't want to talk about. Or maybe it's the other guy she mentioned loving at one point. Or was it loving? I think I'd have to go back and rewatch everything. Maybe it was the guy who was really bad to her. I can't remember, but I'm actually kind of excited to see this fight. But that wraps up the events of this week's episode of Andy Mac. So hit the comments down below and let me know what you think about it. Uh, what was your, maybe your perfect day with your friends? Have you ever tried to recreate it? Or do you think it's like the analogy that um, Bex used about leftovers never being quite as good when you take them home and eat them the next day? Leave all your thoughts down below and then you can hit that subscribe button and thumbs up if you like what you see because I'll be back next week. Uh, I think there's a new episode next week or whenever the new episode is talking about Andy Mac with you guys. I'm Lisa. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time.